What's up everyone, I'm Kevin Anson with TheVideoCourse.com. I have a fresh new lower third for you guys today. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna show you step by step how to make it. You can also download this lower third for free. The link to that is in the description below. All right, let's do it. One, two, three, listen. And welcome back. All right, so if you wanna just skip right to the chase and download this lower third, you can go ahead and do that. The link to that is down below in the description. Also, if you want the exact same font that I'm using in this project, I'm including that in the download folder as well. I've just been a huge fan of this font lately. It looks really nice and clean with lower thirds. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is create a new composition. Just click this button here. We'll call this lower third and we're gonna make it 800 by 160. And I'll leave the duration to 10 seconds, that's fine. Now the thing that I always do is I design first and animate second. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to do here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna type in this guy's name. So Jonathan Anderson, and I'm gonna change this to white. And I'm also assuming that this button wasn't checked for you. This is the caps button that creates all caps. Click on that. And I'm just going to scale it up. Hold down the shift key and scale it up until it fits where I want it to. And then we're going to type in visual effects supervisor. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer. Hit command D on the Mac, alt D on the PC. Double click in here, type in visual effects supervisor it's not easy to type and talk at the same time all right well we're going to scale that down and we're going to make it a little bit lighter so it just looks a little cleaner we can adjust a little bit of this stuff later as well but we have a general idea of how big our name is going to be and our title and where it's going to go so that's pretty good for now Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my ruler. So I'm going to go to view and show rulers, which was already on, but I'm going to turn it back on again. And if you just drag from this area over here on the left, you can actually drag a guide into the screen. And we're going to drag a guide in so that way we know exactly where our line is going to be. So we're going to drag one from the top as well. As we can see in our example here, we have a line that goes uh, right underneath the uh, text. So then we're going to go to layer, new shape layer. And we're only going to want to use the stroke on this one. So if you option click this, just click it until it has a red line through it. So now that one's off. We don't need fill. So you want to change this, make sure it's at white. The stroke is going to be at about one. And I'm just going to zoom in here. And I'm going to go to the pen tool. And I'm going to draw a line right on top of this guide here. Hold the spacebar key to get this hand icon out and slide your screen over. And there you go. And if you want, you can actually move this and snap it to that guide. If you don't have snapping on, just go right here to snap to guides and turn that on. So that way when you move it, it snaps right to that spot. Same with this one. Snap it right to that spot. Just make sure it's nice and linear. All right, so I'm gonna hide our guides for now. So we don't need to see those right about now. And we're gonna drill into the uh, shape layer here that we just created. And we're actually just going to go and go to, we're gonna add a round corners to this. So now you can see the corner is rounded. And I'm gonna set this radius to about five. And then we're also gonna add a trim paths. I'll show you what that does. So now it draws the line onto the screen. It's kind of hard to see, but if you zoom in here, you can see it's actually drawing the line on the screen. So we're gonna set a keyframe on this number here. So I'm gonna make it disappear completely. I'm gonna set a keyframe here. I'm gonna go down about 10 frames by hitting shift page down. And I'm gonna make it go to about there. So we're gonna stop it here. And then I'm gonna go down the timeline about 
one more second. So I'm gonna hit shift page down three times. One, two, three. And then that's gonna go all the way to the end. And we're also gonna add an easy ease on these guys. Shortcut for that is F9, but if you go to here, easy ease, boom. I'm gonna back out a step so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna hit N down here, zero to play back. So now you can see our line is drying out. Very simple. And so now, here comes the fun part. When our person's name comes on the screen, it, we wanna make it look like it's coming from behind this line right here. So to do that, you're just gonna hit, go to layer, new solid, make it white, and then we're just gonna drag, we're gonna get P on the keyboard, we're gonna drag this off the screen about right about here so it matches up with this line. And by the way, if you hold down the shift key when you're dragging the position of something around, it makes it go a lot faster. Just a little tip for you. All right, so we're gonna zoom in right here and we're gonna make sure that that solid is falling right on top of that line. So now, we are going to drag the solid right above the Jonathan Anderson layer, and we're gonna set an alpha mat. We're gonna set it to alpha inverted. So now, when I drag this guy off the screen, it's gonna look like it's coming from behind that line. All right, so we're gonna hit the home key, set a position keyframe here. We're gonna go down about, I don't know, we'll go to the end of this keyframe, we'll have it line up. And then we'll set a keyframe there, and then we're gonna go back to the beginning and drag it off the screen. So as you can see, the text is coming in a little too soon. We wanna see that line drawn on first before the text starts to come in. So all you have to do is just drag your layer down here, uh, down the timeline a little bit, and there you go. Now it comes in at a different time. So the line starts to draw on, boom, the text starts to shoot on the screen. And you can actually change the easy ease um, velocity. It's default. The default is to influence 33. I like to change this to like 65. And it, when it lands, it lands a little bit smoother. So let's see how that looks. That looks nice. So we can do the same thing to this shape layer here. Keyframe velocity, hit tab, 65, 65 and we'll see how that looks. That looks nice. See how it's just a little bit smoother in the way that it transitions on. All right, so the other thing we're gonna do is, if you look at the example over here, we've got this little blue box that comes on and it wipes on that title right there. So we're gonna use the same premise. We're gonna go to layer, new shape layer, and we're gonna make this a blue color and we're gonna draw a box right here, just like that. And as you can see, the box has a stroke on it. We don't want that. So if you just option click this until there's a red line through it, there's no more stroke anymore. And so now we can do some minor adjustments to kind of move this over a little bit. And I'm gonna turn my guides back on and I want this to line up with that guide. That looks pretty good right there. Turn my guides back off. I'm actually holding command colon to turn the guides on and off. You can see what your shortcut keys are by going up to here, view, show guides. So whatever that shortcut says is what you want. I'm gonna select all these layers and hit U to hide all the keyframes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another solid, a white solid, and we are going to make it line up with this box. And the white solid is gonna go right above the name Visual Effects Supervisor and we're gonna create another alpha mat. So now, actually one more thing, we need to parent this layer right here to the blue box. So this is the blue box right here. Let's just name this, I'm gonna hit enter, call it blue so we know that's the blue box. This is the line. So we wanna parent this layer right here to this layer. So if you just drag this little pick whip thing Drag it and drop it on there. Now, wherever this blue guy goes, the white solid goes. So now, as you can see, it's wiping that on the screen. And really all that's happening is, if I turn this on, this is really all that's happening behind the scenes. This is all that's happening.
So I'm going to undo that. So it's just invisible. So I'm going to move this all the way over to the right here. And I'm actually going to change the anchor point on this. So I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard. I'm going to drag this little guy right here, right on top of this blue box, right in the middle. So that way when we scale it up, it scales up from that anchor point. Because otherwise, if you scaled it up, it scales up from that anchor point over there on the right. It just doesn't look very good. So once again, throw the anchor point right on top of here. Scale it up. So I'm going to do scale and rotation. Set a keyframe there. I'm going to hit shift page down. Set another keyframe. And I want to make the scale 0. And maybe we want it to go about 270. So now when it, when it zooms up, it spins. Oh, my bad. We need to reverse that. If you ever do that on accident, so now see how it's scaling down and I messed up? Just select all these, right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse, reverse keyframes. Now it's gonna scale up, boom. So I'm gonna set a easy ease on that. And same goes for this one. It looks like I messed up the rotation one. I wanted it to start at 270 and rotate to zero. So I'm gonna go, same thing, I'm gonna do a time, reser time reverse keyframes. There we go, so it's gonna start at zero. It's gonna rotate up, it's gonna land right there. And now I'm gonna go down the timeline uh, one more second, and we're gonna add a position to this. So position, I'm gonna hit J to go to the previous keyframes. Set a keyframe there, go here, and we're gonna drag this all the way to here. So it locks right onto that, right onto that guide. It should snap to it. And another thing I wanna do is, uh, let's say that I wanted the position to start a little bit to the right. So if I just click here, selects both of the position keyframes and it'll slide all the keyframes over. Now I'm gonna hit K to go to the next keyframe. I'm gonna slide this all the way over. Just making a little adjustment here. That looks good. So I'm also gonna add a easy ease. I'm gonna hit N. To set my work area, I'm gonna hit zero, see how this looks. Looking good. The only thing is, is I want all this stuff to happen a little bit earlier. So right about here, I say this box should come in. And I'm also gonna cut off the um, the text so, it, so the layer starts right here. I'm gonna hit Option Left Bracket or Alt. So I just want these layers to start right here so, so we don't see anything on the screen on accident. Let's see how this looks. Looks good. And I'm gonna also do the keyframe velocity on this one to 65. Looks great. And one other thing, I want to change the color of this. I have some of these solids in here that I used in the original file that I made. So I'm gonna change the color of this box. I want it to match these blues. These blues that I had look really good. So I'm gonna change that. So I like that blue better. And then I'm also, just like the example here, I'm gonna change Jonathan to that blue color. So if we double click on Jonathan here and select his name, and we're gonna pick this color here. Looks good. All right, so now it's time to add the transition out. So I'm gonna drag this blue solid right on top of the screen here, and I'm gonna hit Q, which is same as going to this uh, rectangle tool up here and I'm gonna draw a mask so that it fits just around the lower third. If you hold down the space bar, you can move this around just to make adjustments. So I'm gonna drag a perfect mask right around this lower third. Boom, right there. And I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard, set a keyframe there, and I'm gonna go down 20 frames, set another keyframe, go back to the beginning, slide this off the screen, Hit K to go to the next keyframe, slide that off the screen. So now we have something that looks like this. I'm gonna change the color of this to, let's say I like this green color. So if I option drag this green right on top of this blue here, it'll change the color of that one to green. So I'm gonna hit Command D or Alt D. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Hit U to reveal the keyframes. And I'm gonna move down six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, and move this over. Hit Shift, Command Y or Shift Alt Y 
which is the same as going to layer solid settings and I'm going to change this to a blue color so now we have green and then blue coming on and we're going to put one more on there one more solid move over six frames one two three four five six and I'm going to change it to this red color so now it goes green blue red looks good and I'm going to select all these keyframes and do an easy ease by hitting F9. And so let's see how this looks. I'm going to set my work area to this small area. So I'm going to hit B right here. So let's say I want to speed this up a little bit. I want the transition to happen a little bit faster. I'm going to drag a marquee over these guys. And I'm going to hold down the Option key and drag the keyframes to the left. And that's going to scrunch the keyframes up a little bit and just make it animate a little bit faster and actually right there is where I want my lower third underneath to disappear so if I shift click all these hit option right bracket now all of them all those layers are gonna get cut off and that looks awesome all right so we need to adjust the time on that a little bit we don't want the transition to come in that soon so let's wait two seconds before the transition comes in let's hit shift page down six times one two three four five six our transition is going to start right here. I'm going to shift click all these, hit option, right bracket, and option, right bracket again. So they're going to end right there. There we go. Now I'm going to hit N on the keyboard. See how this looks. And that is it. Now you guys have yourselves an awesome looking lower third. If you want to bring it into your project in Premiere, all you have to do is render it out or you can import it using dynamic link inside of Premiere. Very easy to do. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I really appreciate it. Make sure to get your free downloads below. Please like this video, subscribe and share it with your friends. See you next time.